That will be in his mind today if we have a safety car. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you can see on the front row with Steve Owen, who has been the speedy man up here, but he didn't get pole yesterday in qualifying. Rodney Jane there in seventh. So that fine, half of it suspended, but I think a win. You kind of forget about those things, to be honest. Tim Blanchard starts 14th, had a drama yesterday. We saw him in the fence at turn two. Ben Barker, the Australian Formula 3 championship leader, making his V8 debut. Adam Wallace in a bit of a famous car that we discussed briefly before. That's Greg Murphy's five-minute penalty car from Bathurst here a few years ago. So we'll keep the port all shut for Adam here this weekend, I'd say, with that one. And it's been a mammoth effort from Drew Russell and his team. Of course, he had that incident at the top of the mountain yesterday. Severe damage to that car they have pretty much replaced everything just forward of the rear wheels backwards so it's been a huge task an enormous thanks must go to the TAFE mechanics the uh, Wayne Drew's father Wayne said they couldn't have done it without them and he'll of course start from the rear of the grid in this race thanks Bryony Bryony is in pit lane for the second race of the Fujitsu V8 supercar series and They've been pretty busy with Brad Jones Racing Built Cars. That's one of the ex-BJR Falcons. That car would not be in the race without the NRMA Smash Repair team. They do a stunning job. Oh, absolutely awesome job, Nunes. And uh, they were pretty busy last night. And, of course, uh, Scott McLaughlin in the Fujitsu car for Stone Brothers. Unfortunately, his car, it was in the queue to be fixed, but they couldn't quite get it done properly. So uh, he will be a non-starter here. There's Aaron McGill lining up on the grid for his 40th round in the Fujitsu series. He takes the record from Mark Howard this weekend. It's a very special weekend for Aaron McGill. He'll start from 16th. So it's David Russell on pole in the Jayco Falcon. He'll drive with Jonathan Webb tomorrow. Steve Owen, of course, has the big job. He'll pair with Jamie Winkup. He's focused now. He's on the Fujitsu Series. Green flag at the back. Set to go at Bathurst for 14 laps. 150 points on the line. Love hearing V8 supercars on the rev limiter. Paul Morris from the second row makes a stunning start in the background. Paul Fiore's gone nowhere, but Steve Owen sneaks around the outside. He leads up Petters Mountain straight, and Drew Russell starting from pit lane. Yeah, Russell uh, just... David Russell, that is, just had to lock the inside front tyre. Owen really squeezed him there. And look at this, Blanchard trying to come through the field as well. But... Uh, Russell was the big loser there, lost a lot of momentum out of turn one. Now, into oh. turn two. Big move, round the outside of Aaron Russell. David Russell, no relation we should point out. Back to third, Morris is second, then Nick Perkett, then James Moffat, then Chaz Mostert, Formula Ford Series leader, finished sixth yesterday, his first ever V8 supercar start, stunning drive. Oh, look, I think it's very impressive. He's the Formula Ford Championship leader, and I, I do the driving standards for Formula Ford, and I can tell you, he is a talent, and he will make his way into the main game. He's already decided that's what he wants to do. He's not going to go to Europe. On board with Moffat. Whoa! <laughs> Percat, Taylor into McPhillamy Park. Not a place you want to lose the rear end of the car. And another driver making his V8 supercar debut this weekend, young Nick Percat in the Bundy car. He's another guy that we will definitely see in the main game. He's a real talent. Last year's Formula Ford champ has been under the wing of Walkinshaw Racing for a few years. Back with Tim Blanchard in the Cirame Falcon. In the traffic, Ben Eggleston in front. Here comes a move. Is there a gap? Yes, there is. Now he's on the back of Rodney Jane. He got a fairly slow run there diving under Ben. So let's just have a look. Down Conrod Straight, fifth gear. Fair way back, but he will slowly pull into that slipstream on the toe. Rodney Jane, who's actually having a bit of a look up the inside into the chase here himself. Making a move on Daniel Gillison by the looks of things. And Perkett said with this car, they're trying to make the steering feel a bit heavier so he can feel that front tyre a little bit more to know what it's doing. I actually drove this car at a uh, ride day a week or so ago at Winton. That car nicks in, and you're right, Nunes, the steering is quite light. And across the top of the mountain, you need to be able to feel the front tyre. So... Uh, Look, I think Nick has only raced an Aussie racing car here before, so he's doing an excellent job. Ben Eggleston there, headlights ablaze. Another walking shore prepared car. And Tim Blanchard, a great effort already inside the top ten. Rodney Jane is next on his side, so but look at that. No shortage of horsepower coming out of that, uh, that Falcon. These two cars from the Sonic Motor Racing team, both X888 Vodafone chassis. And Rodney Jane putting a move on Daniel Gillison, the young Kiwi. Oh, that was tight. He's driving a car from Greg Murphy Racing. Just his second round in the Fujitsu Series has acquitted himself well. 
but he's under the gun now. Blanchard's got his nose in front. You've got to get the move done there, and he does it nicely. The cars are quite unloaded as they go into this particular part of the track. The cutting, very easy to, to lock the inside front tyre. So that was a pretty good effort by young Blanchard. Headlights on there around the outside where the car would have felt quite flighty and unstable. Now he's trying to get past Jay. speed across the top of McPhillamy Park and then to be anti-skyline dropping down of course Blanchard young emerging driver Rodney Chain very busy with business and the like racing's a bit more of a hobby but both part of the same team yeah I, look I, Rodney will know that there's no point even trying to hold him up but this is a great battle Moffat on the back of Perkat Perkat Perk got a great start and let's see the horsepower of that FPR prepared Falcon. He's about to pull out of the toe and have a look up the inside. This will be big, and he gets through. That's for fourth. So Moffat makes a move. Of course, this is the older model BF Falcon. He'll be in the FG with Steve Richards tomorrow. Owen, Morris, and David Russell, one, two, three. Nice run off the elbow. A little bit more top end from the FPR built engine. It slips on through in what's been a pretty tough weekend for James. They haven't quite had this car pretty much all season set up how they quite want it. But Owen's flying 2 minute 9.79 on that first flying lap. Having a look down at the chase, not quite close enough, but it's got some really good pace in this ex-FPR Falcon that's run by Matthew White's team. And that car is very, very quick, but Paul Morris getting plenty of miles this weekend. Oh, a little bit of rear well, lock, and Steve off. Owen's gone off too. And he's gone fastest to the second split by a second. And you know what that's done? That throws away the round when David Russell was going to have to pass Paul Morris to be a chance. Now he doesn't have to. And Paul Morris leads this motor race. I was just saying that Paul's racing in the Utes. Uh, this weekend, of course, Fujitsu and in the Bathurst 1000. Oh, Ben Eggleston pits in the City Gate Mount Panorama entry with big damage. This is a replay. This is why. Gets into the chase, gets into the back of Daniel Gillison. And around goes the young Kiwi. First time at Bathurst has done a very good job in the VE Commodore. And so he's oh, 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 in too deep, blocker is. Yeah, and it was just noticed that Paul Morris had a little bit of rear lock and it's uh, it happens down there, you get quite a bit of brake cool off, they get a big heat up into the chase and uh, quite common in a V8 supercar to have a little bit of that rear locking towards the end of the stop but uh, I'm not sure, I mean Steve Owen probably didn't need to be going that hard, he was 1.8 seconds up now he's back in P7 and he was a second faster than the rest of them to the second split at the top of Conrad Strait so he had this one well and truly in hand from a pace point of view so it puts Morris in the lead Russell in second and Russell doesn't need to pass Morris to win the round but nevertheless a clean sweep at Mount Panorama that's really tempting and he's looking racy too Paul Morris knows he's there David Russell has been in this championship mind you for, for quite a long time he's come in and come out and this car definitely has history but when you look at sixth place with Jonathan Webb at Phillip Island in the Phillip Island 500, pole here this weekend. He's partnering up with Jonathan Webb in the Mother Falcon again tomorrow, and uh, he's certainly the form driver in the championship at the moment. This is Chas Boster, who we mentioned in the car that Wayne Moles has been driving earlier in the year. He stepped out, given young Chas an opportunity, and Chas has been getting a lot of help from Glenn Seaton in terms of how you look to get around this racetrack and there's really no one better than a man like Seaton. We go with Tim Blanchard here into the chase. That's Steve Owen up in front in seventh place. And Owen needs to grab a couple of positions just to get back and stand on the podium. Don't forget, it's a, it's a round format still in Fujitsu Series. There's not separate podiums for separate races. It's a, an accumulation of points. And again, again was, there's a problem. I was just about to say there, Nunes, that he was dabbing the brake pedal all the way down Conrod. There was dab, dab, dab and then dabbing the brakes again, so clearly got a brake problem in that car, which is very bizarre, only four laps in. And they're being told, he's being told by the Greg Murphy Racing team to take it easy. Tell you what, he doesn't want this drama tomorrow. No, definitely not. But uh, I just noticed that how much the brake lights were going on down Conrod. And it's just blocked the rears. There's a bit of smoke coming out from under the car, possibly from the locked rears, but that's uh, some sort of brake problem been saying that this championship is pretty much his. He came into this weekend with a 204 point margin with 
300 available for this weekend, but if he struggles to get more points or indeed can't get to the finish, the championship's alive with two rounds to go. I'll tell you what, this race is alive. Morris and Russell are being caught by James Moffat as the cars roar up Mountain Straight one more time. And it's not a two-way dice, it's now a three-way dice. James Moffat is on the scene. He has, and he's caught, caught up just nicely there. There's the coat side chopper that's been giving us great viewpoints of Mount Panorama today. It'll be doing the same tomorrow. But at the moment, Russell has got in front, but Moffat, he is now a factor. Yeah, he is. It was just interesting. Russell just a fair bit stronger than Paul Morris under brakes. He really closed in on that last turn and made a clean pass into turn one. But Moffat's just got a handle of this car. A bit more rubber down today. It's working better for him. Nick Perkett's just dropped off the back of these three. Just wants to get through this weekend and get some more miles under his belt. But Moffat is certainly on a charge of 53-0 to the first sector. Equal to David Russell out in front. So he's actually put seven tenths on Paul Morris to this point of the lap. Perkett fourth, Mostert next, then Jeff Emery. This is a replay up the top on the run through Ray Park and Moffat going. <laughs> when you get to that kerb, you know you're trying. And that's why occasionally around here you get a bit of tyre damage, because that tyre was quite loaded as it gripped up and clipped that kerb. So a fair bit of uh, load going through the left rear tyre there, but it's maximum commitment under the tree, as they call it there, just pulling fourth gear, and uh, Moffat's giving it everything. The update with Steve Owen in the RJ Batteries Commodore. He is 10th. So he slipped back a little bit further, so trying to manage those issues, and he's lost the pace. He's not running as fast as the cars around him, so he might lose some more spots. He's just trying to get to the end, get some points, and then head to Sandown for the next round. Well, Nick Perkat is actually second in this championship, so uh, and he's actually closing up a little bit. This could be a four-way die, so the championship, is, you know, it's never over till it's over. Everyone, I thought was of the opinion that Steve Owen had this in the bag. He had a bit of a, a drama at Townsville where he got entangled in turn one with Russell and uh, here it's not going all the right way for him either. Tim Blanchard, the last car through. Just before him there was Jeff Emery. He'll make his debut in the 1000 tomorrow. There's Ben Barker, the young Englishman, just 19 years of age. He's running ninth. And here is the car, Drew Russell, in 14th place. There he is in that repaired car. Great job from that small team from Newcastle to get back into the motor race. But David Russell pulled out virtually a second on that lap and is starting to drive away. And if anything, Perkett's gained some ground on Moffat. Yeah, he has. So perhaps Moff has just hurt the, the rear tyre a little bit. He certainly had a fair bit of car attitude across the top of the mountain. You can only do that so many times to so heat up the case of the tyre and it does tend to drop off a couple of tenths. So it's not a relatively long race, but uh, perhaps he's just losing a little bit of pace on this last lap. This is the extreme slow-mo. This is Marcus Zukanovic's Commodore. He sits 10th in the race at the moment. And this is up the top of the mountain. And look, the spoiler hitting the kerb, the compression through the suspension. This is all happening so fast, you don't really see this in real speed. Oh, this is awesome footage. I mean, that front splitter there just touching the, the kerb, so it starts to wear the splitter. You can see some flame coming out the side of the car on the, on the overrun as they're off the throttle. Great footage. Watching our timing screens, Owen has lost heaps of ground, heaps of pace. He's got huge problems. He's back to 12th. And it couldn't have happened at a worse round because it's just a two-race format. Normally it's three races with 100 points on each race. This one's more loaded, 150 points up for grabs. It's the worst time to have a problem in a race. Well, he's still got 201 points, so he's going to lose about 30 points at this stage to Nick Perkat. But uh, great for the championship, not so good for Steve Owen. I'm sure he's really thinking about uh, tomorrow with Jamie Winkup, but that uh, keeps the championship wide open. They've still got Sandown and, of course, Homebush, the grand final in December to go. Moffat, a little bit wide at the exit of the last corner. Russell that time at 209.73. He has really got this one by the throat. That car looked really pacey yesterday, and they've backed it up again today. We're right on board. Norton 360 Falcon. So he's about to make a roll bar adjustment there, and he's actually, I can't tell you exactly which way the FBR bars work, but I'd say more than likely just soften the rear bar off a little bit, just to uh, allow the car to have a bit more compliance and look after that rear tyre. So the fact that he is making adjustment inside the car is that he's probably just lost a little bit of balance. But a, a 209.7 by David Russell 
we're going to see times in the sevens in the shootout for the V8 Championship Series, but that is a competitive race pace for the Bathurst 1000, so certainly not hanging around. Of course, the guys at the front will be back in action tomorrow. David Russell with Jonathan Webb, Paul Morris with Russell Ingle, James Moffat, as we mentioned, with Steve Richards. Nick Perkat won't be racing tomorrow. He made his debut at the LNH 500 at Phillip Island. Of course, though, Ryan Briscoe coming back to the country to drive with Andrew Thompson. But David Russell, this is just, we said it yesterday, it's just great for the confidence. And of course, having a support race from the Fujitsu Series wasn't around when, say, you were a young guy. So it gives them more of a chance to run on the track, more laps, more of a chance to get your eye on. And listen to this, this camera angle, you can hear the drivetrain, the gearbox, everything just working. It is a fantastic audio. and that's exactly what you saw there. The back of the car snake around just at the, the latter part of the braking phase. So I'd say the rear tyre is becoming a bit of an issue for James Moffat. We knew he made a roll bar or an anti-roll bar adjustment inside the car. I'd say brake bias would be next. So let's have a look at this. You see the rear just losing, losing traction towards the very end of the stop. And it was uh, not particularly fast lap for him last time round. Pretty comfortable there in the Love Commodore. Moffat third, Perkett in fourth spot. And the race really now has settled into something of a rhythm. Ooh, I don't really tripped over that. A rhythm, Cameron. Well, I just wonder whether Nick Perkett is still a chance to, to sneak a position out of James Moffat. It'll certainly help his championship chasing down Steve Owen if he grabbed those extra points. So this is on board, looking out the back towards Nick, over the top, Perkett using all of the curb and down into the dipper. Have a look at how low the Coates Hire chopper's flying. There's lots of drivers have told me this weekend, when it flies alongside them over McPhillamy, it's actually quite distracting. It is. <laughs> yeah, I can vouch for that. Last year, you think, whoa, where's that chopper going? They're going to land on my roof, but uh, fantastic footage, nonetheless. Now, I saw Nick Perkett just before the start of this race, and he had one of his fingers taped up. I thought it was very, very strange. Drivers regularly will tape up the middle of their hand, particularly with the gloves. He said, no, I just slammed it in the door before. Not exactly the best well, pre-race ritual. The problem there is, Aaron, uh, that David Reynolds drove this car previously, and uh, he's just as clumsy. I think he's been <laughs> hanging around with Dave too much. But it uh, doesn't look like it's affecting his performance. Nick Perkat, we mentioned during yesterday's telecast that Garth Tander certainly tries to help Nick as much as possible, part of the Walking Shore stable. Tim Blanchard here running in sixth place, which is great. He started 14th, so he's fighting with Nick for second in the championship. And also, these two these two guys, no doubt, would be the guys fighting it out for the Mike Cable Young Gun Award for the best first year V8 supercar driver. Tim Edwards, team principal of Ford Performance Racing. Marin Barella from Ford Australia, hoping for a big result in tomorrow's great race. But Blanchard working his way back up the mountain. He's eight seconds behind Chas Mostert and not running at the same pace, so he's losing a bit of ground. Made a, a, a slight mistake yesterday. This is a replay of Rodney Jane, just locking an inside front there. Certainly won't have an issue getting any more tyres for that car. <laughs> so just, just at the apex, so very late in the stop and uh, didn't lose much ground out of it at all. So uh, just hanging on to the top 10, Rodney Jane. Now here's Steve Owen, and he's just been off again down at Turn 1. He is 16th in the race. He's running in the 216s, 217s, so they're just trying to manage this car and get it to the end. Back with Moffat in third. Here's the replay, Turn 1. So I'd say, I'd say what's happening here, Aaron, that he probably doesn't have any front brake. So you can see the rears were locked all the way in. And when, when you have front brake fade, it causes the rear to grab all the time or inconsistently like that. So, you know, I mean, that's a pretty big call for Steve to stay out there, to be honest, if he's really struggling to have any front brakes at all by the look of it. And 
it's something that, that can happen with, with heat dissipation, or but it could be a, a fluid problem or a master cylinder, who knows, but uh, really struggling to have any brakes on that car at all. So it's just a matter of survival for him to try and get some points. Coming anywhere worse than a brake problem. Look at all these different camera angles. This is fantastic. So you'll see the gear lever on the left there, full throttle upshift. So it has a shift cut, just pull the gears through. That's fifth gear there, up over the crest, where it'll get it a little bit light, and then back two gears here for turn two. Well, a little bit of opposite lock there, so he's still Whoa, and again over the curve there, so he's still fairly busy, he's trying hard. I just spoke with Dean Lilly, the team manager for Steve Owen, and he said it definitely is the no front brake issue. Steve is struggling. He said they actually had the same problem in yesterday's race. Not as bad though, they've changed everything overnight, but the problem has reoccurred, so they're here scratching their heads, hoping Steve can hang on for three more laps. Well, Brian, he's doing two minutes 30.2 last time around. He is in 16th place, and if he can stay there at least, he'll still earn 195 points for the weekend, and Nick Perkett, where he runs, is 231, so he just needs to get it home. Being a retirement will be an absolute disaster. That's big to go around Bathurst with hard landing front brakes. Let's have a look down here. Nearly 290 kilometres an hour. Short shift on the exit of the chase there to minimise the wheel spin. Fourth gear under the bridge. Not quite to fifth. And then hard under brakes for the final turn. There's a lot of correction going on on that lap, but a lot of that opposite lock quick correction on the corner exit. So certainly the car is oversteering a fair bit for him. A 2.10.7. In fact, a 10.7 for the first three, and Nick Perk had a 10.8. So they're all lapping very similar place. As you can see, this race has settled down. But has Moffat completely lost all opportunity to, to get on the back of Paul Morris? Still a couple of laps left. I think they've lost the opportunity to go with this guy, the Jayco Falcon, David Russell flying, an ex Mark Winterbottom FPR car that was driven last year by Brad Lowe. This team won the championship with Jonathan Webb last year, and it's been a real tough year for, for David and, and this team. They were expected to be one of the front runners, finished third in the championship last year in another team, Howard Racing. He's fourth coming into this weekend. Just hasn't quite gelled, but it's been coming good at the right end of the season with a win in Townsville, very strong here. And it builds that confidence for tomorrow's big race. No doubt about it. It's all about miles around here, There's, that's for sure. I mean, it's a big ask to jump in in a, in a front-running car, which he is with DJR. But uh, David's had a lot of experience now, close to between six or even seven seasons. I think he's sort of been in and out of the Fujitsu series. He's done a lot of stuff. He, he was in the, the series in the early 2000s. And yeah. Spent a bit of time in Carrera Cup, and he's still pushing. He's not <laughs> going to cruise yeah, this lock up there. I mean, that tyre felt it too. But look, at you're right, Aaron, it's valuable miles for, 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 for James. Paul Morris doesn't need the miles, he's just out having a bit of fun. But uh, David Russell, this will give him so much confidence. He's got the warm-up in the morning before the race and then jump in in the 1,000. Give us a quick snapshot on how things are at the Tol Holden Racing Team, Garth. Obviously, the shootout in car two today, what are we expecting? Well, the car felt very good this morning. I've driven the car on full tanks, you know, race tyres, and uh, the balance has just got a little bit better each day. We're still chasing a bit of outright pace, but for the HRT fans out there, I think Garth will put on a pretty good show this Arvo. David Russell's been putting on a show too. He will go by and start the final lap here in the Fujitsu V8 Supercar Series. His margin is four seconds back to Paul Morris, so he's got to the lead, he's passed Morris, he's controlled the race, and he's on his way home. But Moffat, that time around 210.79, Morris 211.49. He's got a sniff. That was it, that was the radio chat. Seven tenths of a second, he closed in. 
So whether he's made another adjustment in the car and just sort of driven the car straight for a couple of laps to try and get those Dunlop control tyres to recover a little bit, which they can do sometimes if you just be kind to them for a couple of laps. And he might have enough to try and have a lunch here on the last lap. We talk so much about tyre strategy in the main game, but in the Fujitsu series, they've got two sets of new tyres to play with from qualifying in the two races. A lot of the teams ran qualifying in race one on one set and then saved up the second set for this one. There's Terry Morris, Paul's dad. He's quite happy to see how this is all going. He's on target for a podium. He's done a couple of rounds of the Fujitsu series this year. Last year, he roughed up a few of the, the youngster drivers, but he's been a bit more measured this year. Well, he might get roughed up here because <laughs> Moffat's chasing hard and there's still a couple of overtaking opportunities. One is down into Forest Elbow. And the thing is too on Conrad, the BF Falcon, the older car, is a little bit smaller in its frontal area. It cuts the air down Conor a little bit straighter. The VE is a bit wider. He is still a shot. A good run off the elbow here. This He's is all over him down into the elbow. He won't get sucked into taking this move, but Morris goes defensive. Now, Moffat needs to get on the throttle and get the power. Morris with a problem, pulling off to the side. Moffat through to second. No. And there's drama for the dude. The love is gone. Well, it looked like he, he, he tried to block the inside. I wonder if he's got a flat tyre or... It's hard to hear on the audio where there's an engine problem. He's coasting down Conrad. Sounds like he's actually shutting the engine off, so perhaps some sort of engine drama, but he lost a heap of time and on that last lap, but not so much for this guy. Well done, Dave Russell. The two clean, out of two. Oh, the clean sweep. What a way. David Russell has dominated the mountain. He takes round five of the Fujitsu V8 Supercar Series. Great job this Second for James Moffat. Fantastic. Big effort to fix the car. Awesome, awesome job. And David Russell referring to that car was crashed on Thursday in practice. They put in a wonderful effort to get it back on the road. Chas Moster in fourth place for the race. And he should grab fourth for the weekend. That is stunning. Well, we've got to see where Morris comes around because he's tied on points for third for the round with Nick Perkett. And unfortunately, Blanchard up to fifth. So Nick Perkett moves onto the podium for the weekend. And Morris is at the chase. He's just trying to limp to the line to get something. A podium finish is gone. I wonder, I wonder, Aaron, whether he's run out of fuel, whether they ran a very light fuel load. And that car stops. I just wonder whether they've just gone a lap short and the car's out of fuel, which would be very embarrassing for Paul.